The Mario & Luigi series is back! A new game, Brothership, revealed in the recent Nintendo Direct, is coming soon to Nintendo Switch. But why resurrect this franchise almost 10 years after the release of the last original title in the series? At the time that the last Mario & Luigi game released, its developer, Alpha Dream, was in dire financial straits and ultimately filed for bankruptcy. Nintendo's decision to bring back Mario & Luigi is not only a reflection of changing attitudes within the company itself, but also an indication of just how much the RPG landscape, especially on Nintendo consoles, has changed over the course of the Nintendo Switch's lifespan. Let me explain. When Alpha Dream fell, they fell hard. In the lead-up to the studio's last Mario & Luigi game, Alpha Dream had debts of over 465 million yen around £3.5 million pounds or $4.3 million dollars at the time. These debts were not insurmountable, but the company needed at least one solid hit game to keep afloat. Even as Alpha Dream continued to expand and hire more staff, chasing a reversal of fortune, the situation was becoming more desperate. Alpha Dream wasn't helped by the fact that it was partnering with Nintendo, a company which has long had a squeamish attitude toward role-playing games. We mentioned in our last video that longtime Mario producer Shigeru Miyamoto is personally unimpressed with this genre of game. According to the Fire Emblem producer Kentaro Nishimura, this view has been endemic to Nintendo for decades. He said, When I joined Nintendo, I was told that these kinds of games would never be successful abroad, because they were turn-based games, and turn-based games weren't appreciated outside Japan. We decided it was because these kinds of games were too complicated. People are used to action games and shooting games, and in those all you have to do is press the A button and the B button and you'll soon understand how to play. For a while, this attitude was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Nintendo didn't expect good sales from RPGs, so didn't promote or market RPGs. It took a lot of work from Fire Emblem developers to prove to Nintendo higher-ups that these games were even worth releasing outside of Japan given the high costs of localising games with so much text. Now, Fire Emblem has become one of the more popular pillars of Nintendo's global efforts. The Mario role-playing games, though, have never fared as well. While these games often release worldwide, at the close of the 3DS era, there was a definite sense that these titles were winding down. Rather than develop new games, Alpha Dream created a pair of remakes for the 3DS, revisiting the already popular Mario & Luigi games from older systems. This may have felt like a safe bet, but the second of the two, Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr's Journey, ended up being the right game, at the wrong time, on the wrong console for Alpha Dream. By 2019, the Switch had proven itself to be the future of Nintendo. The company paid lip service to the 3DS for a time, but it was clear to the vast majority of consumers exactly which way the wind was blowing. It was a shame then that instead of releasing on the Switch, Alpha Dream chose to develop the Bowser's Inside Story remake for 3DS. When asked why the game was releasing on older hardware, Nintendo producer Akira Otani said, We did think about Switch, but we wanted to maintain the gameplay using the dual screen of the original. That's the main reason we decided to port to 3DS. This likely isn't the only reason that 3DS appealed more to Alpha Dream. At the time, there was a hard delineation between handheld games and home console games, and Alpha Dream was very much in the former camp. Adding the kind of knowledge and experience required to make a Switch game probably would have seemed like a daunting prospect for a studio that was already on its last legs. Indeed, when Alpha Dream did try recruiting additional talent shortly before bankruptcy, they were attempting to hire developers and graphic designers for then up-and-coming hardware, including not only Switch, but also PS4 and smartphone platforms. This suggests that, even as Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr's Journey was in development, studio heads were aware that they needed to pivot away from the 3DS for potential future titles. It's difficult to say how things would have played out if the developers had made a different choice. Alpha Dream were already facing an uphill battle to clear their debts. Nevertheless, had the Bowser's Inside Story remake released on Switch instead of 3DS, the game might have had slightly better sales, with a far longer tail that would keep selling on the eShop to this day. A luxury 3DS games have not been afforded. 
As it was, Bowser's Inside Story and Bowser Jr's Journey had one of the worst opening sales periods of any Mario game in history. Alpha Dream was unable to pay off its debts, and shortly after, filed for bankruptcy. This, it seemed, was the end of the Mario and Luigi franchise. But over the course of the Nintendo Switch's lifespan, something finally changed. All Nintendo games are at the mercy of any given Nintendo console's consumer base. The more consoles that are sold, the more potential customers any given game release can possibly reach. This is true of all games companies. But few studios are as rigid in their approach to exclusivity as Nintendo. And given that the oft-neglected Nintendo RPGs don't sell as well as more action-oriented games, the size of the install base is particularly important for role-playing games. It's unsurprising, then, that in the wake of the Wii U's embarrassing sales performance, Nintendo circled the wagons and focused on big, proven game genres for the first few years of the Switch. It even made sense that Alpha Dream, a studio familiar with handheld titles, would stick to the 3DS with its large existing consumer base, rather than take the chance on the unproven Switch. By the time the Switch was proven to be a runaway success, it would have been difficult, although not impossible, to upend the project and rework its dual-screen gameplay. With the success of the Switch, though, came a freedom to take a few more risks. Thus, in recent years, having seen successes with other role-playing games, Nintendo has been trying again with the Mario role-playing games. Super Mario RPG was among the first in this revival, a fairly faithful modern remake of the original Super Nintendo title. Where the original came late in the console's lifespan, wasn't adequately marketed, and ultimately didn't sell as well as some other Mario games, the remake has done particularly well. As of February 2024, Super Mario RPG had sold over 3 million units on Switch, on par with Pikmin 4, and certainly a profitable investment for Nintendo, even if it still sold far less than the 12 million copies of Super Mario Wonder. With the Switch's large install base, suddenly Mario RPGs feel like less of a risky venture. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door has enjoyed multiple weeks atop the sales charts around the world. If there is any lingering belief among Nintendo's decision makers that Western fans don't like RPGs, the recent success of Mario role-playing titles should hopefully do much to dispel them. And so, Nintendo has promised the coming return of the Mario & Luigi franchise after a lengthy absence, as the company finally seems to be realising that no, actually, role-playing games can sell too. While Nintendo is being characteristically cagey about speaking too openly about the game's developers, there are assurances that some of the original Mario & Luigi developers are working on this new title in some capacity. The moral of the story? Just because something doesn't seem to be working at one specific moment, it doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Sometimes, like Mario RPGs, a good idea just needs the right environment to shine.